This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Neighbor.com, which is a really great idea for rideshare drivers. What if you made an extra $10,000 every year without doing any extra work? You can earn money on Neighbor.com by renting out the space you don't use to people in need of storage or long-term parking. Like if you have a garage, a shed, driveway, or, or parking space, start monetizing it on Neighbor.com. Neighbor is free to use, and unlike your normal 9-to-5 job, Neighbor lets you earn passive income without ever leaving the comfort of your home. Neighbor also protects each host with its $2 million guarantee. So if you're looking for an additional way to earn income, check out Neighbor.com and see how much money your extra space can make you. An extra few hundred bucks each month sure comes in handy as the economy starts to open up and drivers get back on the road. Drive during the day and make passive income on Neighbor while you sleep. If you use the link in the show notes below to list your space, Neighbor will give you an extra $50 when your space gets rented. Neighbor.com is a no-brainer for side hustlers. So visit host.neighbor.com forward slash ride to get started making money today. Again, it's host.neighbor.com forward slash ride. All right, let's start the show. Welcome to the Ride Share Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. All right, all right. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining me uh, today. <clears throat> I'm recording this on May 17th, and uh, we're going to cover some of the news stories that have happened. Things are happening fast and furious in the rideshare industry. Um, not only do we have to keep up on what's going on with all the different government programs, but there's uh, there's just a lot of other news as well. So I picked out, let's see, six stories on this Sunday morning. It's uh, raining outside, nice rain. Normally, if I were driving right now, I wouldn't like the rain. I don't like driving in the rain. The only time I liked driving in the rain was uh, Monday through Friday from about 7 to 9 because there would always be surge and I would make a lot of money driving people to work. But other than that, driving in the rain... Risky, dangerous, didn't like it at all. But that's not now. Now most of us, the majority of us are not driving. We're sitting at home, uh, figuring out uh, other ways to make money, uh, getting money from the government. And uh, since it's Sunday, a lot of people don't work at all. So I'm going to drink a little Nespresso. Let's jump into the first story, which is about Uber. And Uber is uh, looking to buy Grubhub. So Uber, of course, has Uber Eats. And now they're looking to pick up Grubhub. This is, uh, let's see, from uh, something called whtc.com news. And it says, U.S. Senator Klobuchar, right, um, blasts Uber Grubhub deal talks. So U.S. Senator Amy Klobuchar, who, of course, uh, ran for president, um, blasted the merger. Um, so she says, uh, if Uber takes over Grubhub, it isn't good for competition and it isn't good for you. The Democrat from Minnesota tweeted, when big companies corner the market, it usually means more for them and less for you, especially in a pandemic. So uh, she's looking to uh, say, you know, this is almost like a monopoly that they're building here. Between Uber Eats and Grubhub, they're going to, oh, uh, you know, corner corner the market. That's what she's saying. 
So she says, uh, or it said on Friday, Uber closed a 90 million bond offering. It's first since September. Proceeds could be used for working capital and acquisitions, the company said. So um, I don't know. There's still, uh, what else is there besides Uber Eats and Grubhub? There's Postmates, there's DoorDash. I mean, look at Uber and Lyft. Uber is by far, you know, has well over 50% of the market. And uh, Lyft, you know, keeps them in check. So I don't really see it as a, as a huge deal. What do you think? Do you think uh, this should not ha not be able to happen? Um, I mean, if Uber and Grubhub were the only two players and they had 100% of the market, yeah, I see that being a problem. But um, there, there are other, other companies competing for your food delivery dollar. And if uh, Uber and Grubhub together uh, start charging more money, well, then we're going to start using more Postmates and Caviar and DoorDash, right? So story number two is called Uber, Lyft, Essentially Ignore U.S. Labor Laws Employment Expert. All right, so this is on Yahoo Finance, right? And uh, this is a, a guy named, uh, C he's a, he works for a company called Aquent, CEO John Chuang, and he was interviewed by Yahoo Finance. And he said that the trouble with these companies, Uber and Lyft, is they choose to misclassify their workers, and by doing so, they essentially ignore U.S. labor laws. In other words, if you're a worker and you work for Uber or an Instacart or a Postmate, you do not get benefits associated with work. In other words, the minimum wage doesn't apply to you. Overtime doesn't apply to you. You don't get unemployment insurance and you don't get workman's comp. So um, he says sort of the working norm, the worker norms that we have, we held for granted for literally 100 years have been sort of ignored by these companies. And these companies are getting a lot of flack for it and a lot of dissatisfaction. With the pandemic, it's especially important because none of these workers get sick pay. Of course, if they don't get sick pay, then there is an economic incentive to go work even though you're not feeling well. And it becomes a public health issue, he added. Now, of course, Uber and Lyft do have a 14-day sick pay of some sort, and it's very, very little money. Um, essentially not a sick, not a really uh, any incentive to, to stay home, to, to collect your money. Um, and gig workers have been able to file for unemployment for the first time. So that's uh, that, that can you imagine if we were all uh, unemployed and not getting that unemployment? Do you know how much louder the, the, uh, the cries from drivers would be? Um, so we've kind of been given a safety blanket a safety net uh, by our by our own government, but not by Uber and Lyft. And that's exactly what this guy is saying. So great. That's uh, that's something I think we, we all uh, can appreciate and understand that that is the case. Uber and Lyft, they're ignoring U.S. labor laws. Yes. OK, uh, next comes from uh, TechCrunch and it says rideshare drivers stage caravan protest over Uber's labor practices. Drivers want Uber to comply with AB5. So apparently around 100 Uber and Lyft drivers sta staging a, a caravan protest at, at Uber's headquarters in San Francisco to demand Uber comply with gig worker protections law AB5, pay into the state's unemployment insurance fund, and drop the ballot initiative it proposed along with Lyft and DoorDash that aims to keep gig workers classified as independent contractors. You know, in my role as um, advertising manager for the uh, rideshare guys, someone approached me and, uh, you know, they wanted to get my support for this uh, uh, ballot initiative. And I was like, and you are, you are barking up the wrong tree here. I will not support that uh, because we looked at that and that will pay drivers even less than they're currently getting paid. So don't fall for the ballot initiative. No matter what they tell you, if you look at the numbers, it's less money for drivers. So uh, let's see. It says here, a recent survey in San Francisco found 45% of gig workers can't afford a $400 emergency payment without borrowing. And 78% of gig workers are people of color. As part of the protest, drivers also want shareholders to know that when they invest in companies like Uber and Lyft, they become part of the problem. So 
these drivers are pretty just pissed off. They're just like, fuck you, Uber. <laughs> and uh, yeah, good for them. You know, it's a free, it's, that's America. You can say what you want. Um, and uh, these guys are saying it. They're saying it uh, by talking to the press and they're saying it by, by uh, creating this uh, caravan protest over Uber's labor's laws. I mean, we're in America and there are laws. And when a law goes into effect, you would expect companies to respect the law. But that's not what happened here. Uber and Lyft have ignored the law. And as a result, people are, are upset. And, uh, and again, I, I say, you know, imagine that we were not getting unemployment benefits or the PPP loans. We didn't have access to those things. Um, how much different the landscape would look. As it is, we are, many of us are getting money from our government, uh, which which has really softened the blow of this pandemic. But uh, no thanks to Uber, no thanks to Lyft. All right, the next one is uh, comes from uh, the Observer, Observer.com. It says big Uber shareholders reb rebel on CEO's huge pay package amid coronavirus layoffs. So. There's something called uh, say on pay, and that's where the shareholders can vote um, uh, for or against um, the uh, the compensation of the top paid executives. And uh, here it says uh, in the article, say on pay is a legal term that describes a corporate governance rule that gives shareholders the right to vote on the compensation plans of their company's highest earning executives. Say on pay voters votes are a key indicator of what a public company's shareholders think of its executive pay package. In Uber's case, 70% of the shareholders supported CEO Khosra Shrahi's compensation package at the most recent voting, which significantly lags behind the industry average approval rate of 90%, um, according to a report. So uh, what they're saying is that in most cases, nine out of 10 people, nine out of 10 shareholders support the pay for their key executives. In Uber's case, that number is 70%. So that means uh, three times as many shareholders are not happy uh, with this guy getting paid the money that he's getting paid uh, because of the situation we're in, right, with the pandemic. Um, it goes on to say, how much money does it say he made? Okay, Uber Uber pays Kajra Swahi an annual base salary of $1 million which is fairly within the range of what CEOs of comparable tech companies are paid. But last year, he received a total pay package worth 42.4, 42.4 million, uh, comprising of that 1 million in base salary, 2 million in bonuses, and then 37.4 million in equity award, and 2 million in reimbursements for work-related expense. So that's the one that I found interesting. He got... Two million in reimbursement, so that means he spent two million dollars in a year uh, in work-related expenses. He must. Uh, I can only think that's got to be like what you know, an apartment, uh, a company apartment, um, flying around in a private jet. Uh, I, I don't know. How do you spend two million dollars in work-related expenses? I mean, most of your time. I got to think it's I got to think it's flying around around the world talking to, um, you know, the different uh, Uber uh, offices around the, around the world. That's quite a lot of money. Forty two point four million. And he's getting some flack about that. All right. And, and deservedly so. Um, I say I don't think I don't think you should be forty two million dollars. Um, and they will not they will not they will not call us employees because it's too expensive. Okay. Next one, Newsweek. Judge denies injunction calling Uber drivers employees and granting them sick leave in the U.S. So, so this was brought, uh, this case, here I'll just read it. A California judge has denied a preliminary injunction in a lawsuit filed by a group of Massachusetts-based Uber drivers that the ride-sharing service should reclassify the drivers as employees and offer them paid sick leave so they don't risk spreading COVID-19 to passengers. The denial issued by Judge Chen um, leaves the drivers to individually arbitrate their claims directly with legal representatives from Uber. The worker's attorney, Sharon Liss Reardon, has pledged to appeal to the U.S. Uh, 
Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit. Uber currently classifies its drivers as independent contractors, even though numerous, work, numerous drivers work more than 40 hours a week. Thus far, no American courts have ruled on whether ride-sharing companies have any obligation to reclassify its workers as employees. So this means that there's not going to be any class action suits. Um, and this is what's in the agreement that you and I both signed. And if you want to take legal action against Uber or Lyft, uh, because they're still, uh, they have been treating you as, uh, they have been classifying you as an independent contractor, but treating you as an employee, and therefore you're entitled to back pay. You have to uh, get an attorney and, uh, and go into arbitration. As you may or may not know, this is something I am doing. Um, I'm working with Potter Handy LLP, which is a San Diego-based company. Um, they're handling my case, and we're actually at the point where we're picking uh, somebody to be the arbitrator in my case. I'm into it about six months now, and it's probably going to be another six months before anything happens, but uh, my case is moving forward, so I'll keep you posted on that. So this... I, it's, I just don't think any judge is going to say, is going to uh, just uh, say, you know, the the law is the law, and you would Uber and Lyft, you have to agree to it. Um, the law is is the law, but Uber and Lyft, for whatever reason, um, are being able to skirt the law. And if you, as a driver, feel um, you're you're due some money because of their misclassification, you have to get an attorney and uh, go it alone. So that's what that is all about. All right. And the last one is, uh, you know, when you decide to go back to work, it's going to be a little bit different. Here's how your Uber ride will change. This is also TechCrunch starting May 18th. That's tomorrow. And uh, I talked about this a little bit on my other episode, but basically you're going to have to wear a mask. You're going to have to have your passenger sit in the back seat. Um, the way you're going to make sure you wear a mask is you're going to have to do like a selfie check at the beginning of your ride with Uber. Um, if you do Uber Eats, you're going to have to leave food at the door. Um, so they're they're really trying to make it as safe as possible. Um, I guess the question I have is, you know, who's, who's going to want to go back to driving if you're getting some unemployment money and there's still a significant risk of you getting COVID-19 if you're in a small metal box driving 10 to 15 to 20 to 30 people around in a daytime. I don't know. I don't know. Um, our, our recent uh, survey said that about 40% of drivers are driving to, at some capacity and 60% have just said, no, you know, I'm not going to drive for a while. So um, I'll, I'll read this little bit from the article. Uber will encourage drivers and riders to cancel trips a move that in the past could result in a lower rating. If they don't feel safe or the user is not wearing a face mask or cover. If drivers or riders give a low rating, they can now pick no face cover or mask, along with the other traditional options such as late for pickup, disrespectful, or cleanliness. If the user chooses the no face cover option in, the re in their review, the rider or driver will be sent a message informing them about the requirements of being on the Uber platform. Um, uh, Cancel said Uber will take riders or drivers off the platform if they repeatedly violate these requirements. Drivers will have to verify they're wearing a mask before accepting trips using Uber's existing driver selfie technology. The app also features a video tutorial on how to wear a mask. So um, I actually wrote a whole article and made a video about this if you want to get more into the weeds about uh, the new safety policies that both Uber and Lyft uh, have implemented. All right. That's the news. That is the news. And uh, yeah, interesting times. What can you say? Interesting times. I uh, just, what I'm up to is I'm writing my articles. I'm making my videos. I'm doing my podcasts. My plan B has become my plan A, my coaching business. I don't know when I'll be driving again. I'm still really interested in this market and I'm going to keep talking about it. But uh Things have really changed, do you know? The days where I could just drive down the road, my windows open, listening to some music, talking to my passenger in the front seat, sun shining on our face, that's not going to be happening, not for a long, long time. No, it's going to be we're going to be wearing masks. He or she is going to be in the back seat. I'm going to be in the front seat. And uh, 
I don't know. Do you think we're going to get used to talking to people through masks? I don't know. Um, I've been pretty stay at home, so I haven't really had a lot of interaction with people with a mask on. Um, in my county of Placer County, um, there is a very, very low risk of getting a COVID-19. People are pretty spread out. I think we've only had like nine deaths in the last three months in this whole county. Um, and eight of those were in, you know, senior senior centers. So um, we're going to be one of the counties that kind of is brought back to the economy. Um, I think next week we get to go and eat at restaurants uh, again. And uh, hopefully soon I'll be able to go out and get a freaking haircut. You know, that's uh, something I'm looking forward to. So strange times. That's the news. You're up to date. That's a wrap. Fist bump to all you drivers out there. You guys are my heroes. I honor you. Thank you for sharing your journey with me. Be safe out there. This is Jay Creator saying this episode is in the can. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening and be safe out there.